welcome back all of you and then we are into the next session of this now one second <coughs> let me share my screen and then start the next session now so we have completed all the material transfers the next topic is min max so we are going to do min max min max planning what exactly is min max <coughs> In max the one which you're going to see so here <clears throat> there is one thing called min max method and then min max planning on your fusion inventory documentation so double click on the fusion min max planning mode so we have a area where we are manufacturing it this is known as a whip now whip, whip is a working process area where we are manufacturing let us say we are manufacturing bicycles. So for manufacturing a bicycle, what we need is we need both the wheels, we need the handbar, and then we need the frame, we need the brakes, dynamo, etc. etc. So there will be an area which is very near to this. There is a sub inventory which will be very near to the manufacturing area. This is known as a normally a shop floor sub inventory, or they will be giving a name. It. So this sub, sub inventory is famously referred to as SFSI. Shop floor sub inventory and it cannot contain a large amount of quantities. It has got some limitations because near to the manufacturing area, we cannot have a sub inventory which can have large quantities of material. Actually. So, all the quantities will be available in the main. Main will be having a big storage actually, and then from there, you will be moving it to shop floor sub inventory, and then from that, it will be consumed in the and then it is always recommended to keep a minimum and maximum stock so that the manufacturing doesn't stop. So let us say if the stock level has gone below 10 and then to touch zero, it will not take, let us say, 45 minutes. In 45 minutes time, it will be touching zero. In that case, we will now immediately click uh, what happens, a kickstart, a replenishment process. Replenishment is nothing but a backfill. We are going to backfill this one. Right? We will now kickstart a replenishment process. In this case, we are going to bring it from another main sub inventory into this shop SFSI. Engine. So that process will not take approximately 45 minutes time. Then we will now set up a stand engine. And then the maximum this stock, this SFSI can stock is 50. 50 means what? 60 also or some 65 also it can go. Beyond which it will no overspill. So something, let us say it is 65, you will now set it up as 58. So like we will be setting it. And then there is a carrying mechanism. So this is called a trolley, which is going to bring in. And then here it can have what? The minimum must be at least 5. This is called economic order quantity. Otherwise, the carrying cost, the person who is now pulling it, from this main sub inventory, which is one kilometer away to the SFSI. And then the if you see the cost of the uh, helper who is going to pull it from this place to this place, it will be more than the order quantity. It's called economic order quantity. So the economic order quantity is now set to five. Find this, there is a lot of empirical calculations to derive a date number. It will be a very tough one. Uh, if the end customer is asking you to statistically derive this one, EOQ, it has got a lot of formulas also. Fine, based upon the formulas here, it is like, if you go on the see in the internet also, fine. <clears throat> economic order quantity. Economic order quantity. If you click on it, it has got plenty of uh, what's uh, mathematical formulas and other things, fine, with which we arrive at this. So the what's called what it says is that the carrying cost should not be uh, more than the order cost. Fine. So that is how the economic order quantity is derived actually. It's really very tough. In fact, if uh, the end customer is asking you to go on for statistical calculation of this, fine. so that way it works up. So if you happen to happen, then you have to go through the documentation and then uh, try to identify what is the uh, Q now. So now we are manually testing it. Everybody will not be allowing manually. So this is the minimum is five, and then the maximum the trolley can handle is forty. And then let us say uh, you are now asking for the main sub inventory chalk pieces. So they give you in a bundle of five. If you ask one, they will now give you only one and then not a, a one bundle. They will give you not one. So this is called fixed lot multiple. So for every item, this FLM varies. And if they give you one also, then you don't set it the FLM. If it is a blank, then it is one each also is possible. Right? Otherwise, they will not uh, give you five each only when you ask for one. And then uh, uh, may, you will now have a keep a stock of thousand for a particular raw material. And then FLM is five. So as a consultant, your work is what derive these values of mine. Ten comma fifty comma five comma five comma forty. Right. So these five parameters you have to decide on this place. Right. 
So this is how the min-max works. Right. This is the min-max planning. So it works. Now we'll now go to another document called what's called min-max method. On the same one, we have a min-max method. Double click on it and then you'll now have it. Min-max method. So whenever the stock level moves below, we will be running a concurrent or ESS job known as what? Print min-max. Once when you run it, it will now pick up all these values. What are the minimum? What are the maximum? What are the FLM? What are the minimum auto quantity? What are the maximum auto quantity? So it will pick up everything. So based upon which, step number one will be done. The step number one, what you're going to do is you're going to calculate the available quantity. You'll not calculate the available quantity. Available quantity is going to on-hand quantity plus supply, expected supplies. Let us say you're making a purchase requisition for the item. That is also a supply. If you make a purchase order, that is a supply. So there are plenty of supply sources there. If you refer the document, your implementation guide will tell you how many supply sources are there. Similarly, demand. You have made a sales order. Sales order is a demand. It's going to go away. You have to subtract it. So you add all the supplies and then subtract all the demands. It will know you will be arriving at available quantity. So in this exercise, we don't have any purchase requisitions or anything like that. So 9 plus 0 minus 0, it will be 9. I'm now going to keep a stock of 9. And I'm going to so here I am now setting it up what? Minimum is 10 now. Fine. As per the example, I will be setting up as a minimum 10 and 50. I'm going to set it up. This figures you have to arrive at practically by visiting the site. All the five parameters, you have to visit the site and then arrive this figures. For the example sake, we are not done it. So now, on the second step, the system will not decide whether the min-max is really required or not. It says what? Required. Min-max is required or not. Is available quantity is less than minimum or not? We are not testing it. If the available quantity is now less than minimum, if it is yes, it will not go to this place. If the available quantity is going to be equal to or more than minimum, it will now exit the replenishment. It will not replenish at all. That means what? We still have sufficient stock. So we can even still run the manufacturing without any problem. Only when it goes to less than 10, then only we need to bring it from the main supplement. The replenishment is required. So in this case, the diamond box is basically a decision-making box. The decision-making box will not calculate AQ is less than minimum or not. Now it comes to the third level. Then the required quantity comes in the picture. <clears throat> the required quantity is what? Max quantity minus available quantity. So max quantity is what? In this case, we have to bring it to 50 now. Whenever you want to replenish it, we have to bring it to 50 now. So 50 minus available quantity is 9. So we need 41 from the main stores. 41 from the main stores. So upon which the FLM will be applied. Apply the FLM. So once when you apply FLM, 41 will now become what? 45 or 1. When you are going to apply, when you are going to apply the FLM, the, the rounding comes into picture. The rounding comes into picture. So the rounding rules are there. There is a rounding rule. There are three types of rounding available in the industry. One is the ceiling rounding, one is the floor rounding, and then one is the nearest rounding. And then as far as material management is concerned, the floor rounding is not there at all. There is no floor rounding at all. Material management do not have any floor rounding. It has got only ceiling rounding or nearest rounding. Floor rounding is not applicable for material management at all. So what is ceiling rounding? If you have 1.1, 1 .1, the ceiling rounding will now bring it to 2. 1.49 also 2 and then 1.51 also 2. So if your value is there, it gets rounded off to 2 for a ceiling rounding. For the nearest rounding, 1.1 will now become 1. 1.49 will now become 1. And then 1.51 will now become 2. That is the nearest rounding. Okay, flow rounding is not applicable. So I hope that you understood that. Ceiling rounding as well as nearest rounding. By default, what happens? The system has been set to nearest rounding. The system has been set in the nearest rounding. Now, nearest rounding, it is now set. Now, you see, uh, in the step number 4, 41 is required. Now, tell me, on the nearest rounding, it will now go to 40 or 45. Anybody? It will now go to 40 or 45. But the fixed load multiple is 5. So, 41. It has to go to 40 or 45. Anybody? Can you make a guess now? 40. 40 is 100% correct. Because 41, it is now nearest is 40. So, it will now go to 40. In this case, I have given for a ceiling rounding. Normally, middle management always recommends only ceiling rounding. This is the only rounding is expanding it. But fusion has been designed for a nearest rounding. But if, if the customer wants, we can very well go for ceiling rounding also. So we will now follow the nearest one as a nearest rounding. It will be going to body in the case. The 45 is, not, 45 is a, uh, uh, what is called MM's middle management's recommendation. Now, in our case, it will now go to body because by default, it has been set in nearest rounding. Now, step number five is a very important point. We are now going to calculate the reorder quantity. The reorder component quantity is a combination of what? Order max and then order minimum. Fine. There's a combination of order max and order minimum. 
Here, the order max is what? The order max quantity <clears throat> is 40. In the trolley, you can have, give a maximum of 40. The minimum is 5. Right? So, it is a combination of 40 and 50. How the system will now calculate? It will not try to order 1 max. It will not try to order 1 max. Right? So, we need 40 now. So, if you order 1 max, then it gets what happens? Satisfied. I have now given a bigger example based upon the ceiling now. So, in the, in the, on, the, on the ceiling now. Not a real story. So 41 will become 45. And then here, if you see 10, 50, and then we have the available quantity of 9. And then here I will now going to put as a 20 and 40. Here instead of 5 and 40, I'm now putting 20 and 40. 20 and 40. So if I'm putting 20 and 40, <clears throat> how it is going to come? We're going to see now. So 20 and 40, the one. If it's 20 and 40, now what happens? It will now go for 140, and then it will now go for one minimum. The one minimum is 20. So 40 plus 20 is now exceeding 45. So it will not allow it all. So the thing is what? There is a condition written on the back end. Stepwise output should be less than or equal to step 4, but it should not be greater than step 4. That is the logic which has been written. So for these parameters, we are giving it, what happens? It will be 40 only. But if you change it to 5, 40, then system will now order for 140. And then one more trolley is also very much possible because the trolley has got a, what happens? You are carrying capacity of what? Five. Five also is possible. In that case, it will order one more trolley. Two trolleys will be added. So it will be 40 plus 5. Okay. For this one. So 10, 50. And then if you're going for 5, comma 40, it will be 45. Go down. Now, for the third situation, we have 40 here, 100 here. Available quantity is 0. And then this is 30 and 60. So system will now go for one max and then one minimum. And then in multiples of 5, 30, 35 is also possible. 40 also possible. So 60 plus 40 is very much possible. The system will be recommending two trolleys of one for 60 and then one for 40. In this case, what happens is there is a problem. It will going to be 40 to 100, 0, 30, 60. It will order for three 60s, but afterwards, what happens? It cannot order for one more 30. That is not possible at all. Because one more 30 means what? The total requirement, we can have maximum only 200 fine, so it will be exceeding this. Right? The sub inventories uh, levels are what? 40 and 200. So here I have given 10 and 15. Right? So it should not be exceeding this right? This step. Is not pausing. So it will now give you only 60 plus 60 plus 63 trolleys it will recommend. The fourth trolley it cannot recommend at all because it will not exceed this value. So we want 200, but we are going to, going to get only 180. So there is a problem here. Right? We have to live with the problem. No other good. Right? You can even say five, four 50s. 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50 will be 200. But th there is no logic for it. If you can derive a flow chart, then the technical team will very well do it. The technical team is unable to do it. So if you can create a flow chart for deriving of a 50 plus 50 plus 50 plus 50, they can very well do it. But since there is no flow chart available for such a condition, so we have to live only with the existing conditions. Also. The next case is what? 40 and then 210. And then it is a 30, 60. And then in this case, if it is 210, means what? 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 30 is also very much possible. In this case, 40 and 220, it will now say 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 40. So that way it comes out. So these five steps are the golden rules as far as min max is concerned. Now, what you're going to do is we are going to go for a, what's called a, uh, this simulating this situation of it. So 540, I'm going to simulate this one. 10, 50, 5 comma 5 comma 40 i'm going to simulate it and then i will now test it now we are in a nearest domain we are in nearest domain. let us now test it so let us now first of all create an item we'll go there we will now create an item <coughs> so inventory management click on the home icon. let us now go to the product management and then we'll now create an item Min max test, I'm going to create so product management and then let me create a min max test, product information management, and then we'll be creating an item. So click on it. Now go the click on create now. So we are going to have what a min max test item. So organization is 000. Sorry, sorry, it will be uh, T010. Sorry, sorry. Click on OK. Click on yes now. Go to this place. Then here. Uh, in this place, item. 
item is uh, 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 let's say it's a T01. So MM test is like min max test is like I'm ready to give a more and take out it. And that's it. So let us go there and then assign it to the author, go to the associations. So we don't have any controls or anything that involved in this now. But in reality, it will all the controls will be involved. Self map. I will now say T01. Enter now. I will now choose the first child over here, and click on apply and then by which the item is now very associated with the first star. T01 MM test is the one. I will now go there and then save and close by which I will now done. Item is now created and then assigned. Now what I do is I will now go there. I will now go to go to the whole view from the inventory. View. So click on it. I will now go to the task. Task means what? I go to the setup and maintenance, and then I go to the click on the task console, and then go to the generic task. Task means what? We have to go to the generic task. Click on it. We will now go to the generic task. So here I will now say manage sub lookup. Manage sub lookup. So you go to the manage submittery locators. So here I will know what on the first submittery I am going to plan it for the min max actually. So the parameters are what? This is the parameters I am going to use. 10 comma 50 comma 5 comma 5 comma 40. That is what I am going to say. So this is the one which is a challenging job which you have to go there and then wait. So click on the manage item submittery. I am on the T012. So I will now change it to T01. Now. I click on change organization. We have to be at the appropriate org. So I will now change it to T011. Now. I don't change it to T011. So, click on OK. So, I'm in this organization. I will not choose what RMS1. And then go to the manage item sub inventories and navigation. And click on the manage item sub inventories. Manage item sub inventories and navigating it. So in this place, I go there. I will now add my item. I click on plus and then let me add my item once again. So item, I click on it. I will now choose item. T01 underscore MM and then give a tag. Item I'm putting it. So here go there. The minimum quantity. So the minimum quantity is what? 10. The maximum quantity is 50. So this is the sub inventory is quantity. Or let us now first of all create a sub inventory. Also. I will now create a SFSI sub inventory in which I will not do it now. I click on the number of it. I will now create one sub inventory called SFSI. So click on plus. This is a shop floor sub inventory. <coughs> I will now create one sub inventory called SFSI. <coughs> so go here. Yes, FSI. Yes, sorry. Yes, yep, yes, sorry. So shop floor sub inventory, take away it. And then go to the description now. And then location is the only thing which is required for this. Location. So click on save and close. And then I will have one main also. So I will know exactly simulate one SFSI and then one main sub inventory also. So click on. So it is now completed. Let me go and then create a main sub inventory also. SFSI is now created. So uh, other things are not required. Fine. No locator. So locator control is no, no. No, no. <clears throat> so click on plus, I will now create a main subject. Also. So it's a main subject. Take a copy of it click on the description. Location is T01. And then you have And then click on save and close. So the SFSI and main are created. I will now restrict the item into SFSI. Manage item submit is a restriction actually. I will now select the SFSI and then click on the manage item submit trees. And then here I am going to restrict it actually. So here I will now give a plus. Now. I will now attach my item over here. Item is what? T01 underscore MM. The inventory planning method is going to be min max plan. It is a min max plan. Min max plan. 
right? This is min max period. So here the quantity is what 10 comma 50 comma 5 comma 5 comma 40. The parameters. So FLM is 5. Uh, is that is that this is the 10 and 50 or the uh, what's called the sublimentary levels now five FLM is five and then this is also the, uh, the trolley's capacity is what minimum five and then maximum four so we have to give this first and then go the type make it a type type is what I will now give sublimentary we are going to begin with the sublimentary sublimentary and then I will now leave the sublimentary blank so that the system will automatically allocate allocation the movement request allocation is the power of it now right so leave it so that if item is available in multiple subunits it will not decide that movement. but if you put main it will not pick only from main it will not do any allocation at all if you are putting any subunit that will not supersede the movement request allocation actually it is not going to create a movement request for subunit but that will be superseding it if you are putting it so always we leave the blank but if the customer says you pick it only from this place only and not any other place then you put that subunit over here so click on seven close by which my min max is now completed. Remember the inventory planning method must be min max planning. Remember, click on seven close. It must be min max planning. And then 10 comma 50 comma 5 comma 5 comma 40 sub inventory. And then save. And then these are the only things which you had entered. It is not done. But the complete thing is not done. Now let us now keep a stock as per the plan. In the SFSI, I will now keep a stock of nine. And then in the main, we will now keep a stock of thousand. So let us now keep a stock of it. What is this place? And then we will now keep a stock of it. I will now go to Change the organization first of all. I think it has already changed. I will now go to the create miscellaneous transaction. You can now see on the right hand side whether you are in the proper org or not, always make a check of it. We will now perform a miscellaneous result. So, miscellaneous result is the one I am now making it. Account, I am populating it. 10 iPhone, 100 iPhone, 1000 is the one. Click on yes now. Click on plus. Item is T01 underscore M and then we are sub inventory. I'm going to put it about at the main. I'm going to keep thousand. Main is thousand. Click on it and then I will not give a plus. T01 underscore M and then we are tab. And then at SFSI, we will not keep nine. Yes, we are going to get the point of nine. So this is a simulation which you are making now. So as per the plan, if you go there, so this plan. So we will now keep a nine over here, and then in the main we have thousand. So it will not behave like this only. So we are given already for 10, 50, 5, 5, 40 is the parameters. So it will now go to step number three, and step number four will be 40 because of your nearest surrounding. It will be 40. And then the reorder quantity will be coming as what? Only 40. It will now come as 40 only. It is actually 5 and 40 only for this case. Go there and then click on submit. So click on submit. We are now simulating the stock as per our plan. It is now simulated. I will now right click and then duplicate. We will now run the what's called the concurrent now. I go to the tools. I will now run the ESS job. Whenever I run the ESS job, what it will do? It will now calculate how much is required. So what you can do is we can schedule this ESS job every half an hour or every one hour. So it will automatically keep on running. So click on the schedule new process here. I will now say print min. So previously it was what? Print move. No. Now it is print min. And the moment request it is print move. Now print min is the one. You are going to run the print min. So go ahead and click on OK. I will now say organization is a P011. And then sort by how do you want to sort? I will not say inventory item wise, you can sort it. So we can leave it blank and then let the, all the items which are eligible for right? all min max planned items will be coming in. Right? If you leave it blank, sub inventory level we are planning. And what is the sub inventory level? I have to say it is SFSI. the SFSI. The SFSI. On this one, we are going to plan. Right? So I know only putting up this one. Right? So click on submit. So we give the org sub inventory and SFSI. Now it will now give output of 40. Now. Fine, if you click on submit. It will be giving an output of 40. 40 will be the output now. <laughs> because of nearest surrounding, it will now go to 40. <clears throat> and then it will now give only 40. And remember, we have only what? This one. So we have only 540. Right? So since it is nearest surrounding, our quantity of 41 has now become 40 now. The 41 has now become 40. So output will also be 41. Now 
go on and check for it. The min max planning report is now getting printed. So here also it will be 41. Then we will now change it to what? Ceiling rounding. Right? We're going to do the ceiling rounding. By default, it is nearest rounding. And then we can even change it to ceiling rounding. So click on republish the output. Whenever it is a report, we can very well republish it actually. So click on this now. I'm going to export and then export it to PDF. We are exporting it to PDF. We'll now have a look at the PDF. You know, exporting it to PDF. So it's not coming in to control. So click on it. You know how it go down. So the output is 40. It says what 10 and 50 are the minimum and maximum levels. The on hand is 9. There is no supply, there is no demand. And then though, so on hand plus supply minus demand is available quantity. That is also equal to 9 now. So that is also equal to 9. And then the ordering uh, trolley has got a 5 and 40 as a capacity. The multiple is also 5. So it has now given a 40 each as output. The 40 is the output. So now let us now make it to ceiling rounding. So if you make it to ceiling rounding, if you go to make maximum ceiling rounding, if you make it a ceiling rounding, now it will now go to 45 now. 41 will now go to 45. Now. Let us now make it to ceiling rounding. Go there. So click on it. Now go there. We will now make it to ceiling rounding. Close this now. We're going to make it to ceiling rounding. So go to the OV area. So we will now go there and then make it to ceiling rounding. I will now go to the I will now go to the task manage inventory organization. What is the setup and maintenance? <coughs> setup and maintenance one. So I am going to make it a ceiling only. Click on it. We go to search now. Manage inventory organization is the task. Manage percentage. INV percentage. R percentage. If you go to the manage inventory R, let me query my R. So T01. Select it and then click on edit. So click on next. Here, if you put a round reorder quantity, if you put a tick mark on the round reorder quantity, it is ceiling rounding. If you don't put it, it is nearest rounding. So you put a tick mark on this. So click on save and close. I will order. Now I will now go to the monitor process. I will now run the concurrent again, the same parameters. There is no change at all. So select it and then click on resubmit. There is no change in the parameters and select it and then click on resubmit. So it is not showing you what are the parameters that have been passed for the previous concurrent. So click on yes, no fine, we are now resubmitting it again. Now this time the output will be 45. No running. So the previous output was 40. Now this time the output will be 45. Print min max is now waiting actually. 913 is ending. There are so many weight tasks are running. So let us now kill all the weight. Right? That is all pre periodically going to run now. Right? That is not really required. Let it start and then I will now kill all the weight actually. I will go ahead and then kill all the weight. In the meantime, what happens? I will right click and then duplicate. So I will now check killing of the all weight in another one. So go there, go to the tools and then go to the schedule to process here. I am going to query and then kill now. So let us see whether it starts or not. Min max has to start now. It has to start to run now. It is still waiting because of so many concurrents which are pending now. This is the problem. Now we'll go there. So go to the search and then choose only which are all in the weight. Now. Which are in the weight. So click on it. So take it. I have to go to search. First of all, let it start to run now. The print min max, you know, see it has not got succeeded also. 
So in the meantime, we will go there. We will not search for the weight now. And then we will not kill all the weight actually. So we will not come over here. And then there is no success. And go there and then have a look at the output. The output will be 45 because of ceiling rounding. The output will not show 45 because of ceiling rounding. So many media companies are go to actions and then go to cancel the process in bulk. So once when you cancel the process in bulk, it will be canceling everything, all the things which are made. You know, okay. And then once when the cancellation is complete, fine. If you search for it, it says after fine. I had to put the before actually. Fine. I made a mistake actually. I should have put a before actually. So click on escape. So weight is now going to see now. Fine. You're not going to kill all. Whatever is there in the weight, it will kill all. I have put before on something. The date is not proper actually. So let us see on the all now. And then have a look. So it is not working at all. You know that one thing that you got struck. Close this. And then we will now see whether it works or not. It is also not working. So let us now create one more now. I duplicate. So many problems. So go to the tools and then go to the schedule to process. And then, you know, refresh it. It has to show me the latest 913 or something like that. 913 is the concurrent, which has now got complete now. Afterwards, there is no print min max. No See, is there any min max? Nothing is there. That is the latest one. So we'll now go to the 913. And then see the output now. This will be having what? Uh, 45. Now. And click on population. It will be having a value of 45. Export to PDF. It will be having a value of 5. It is for the ceiling rounding. So the output is now 45. So if you're having a ceiling rounding, the output will be 45. So we can have the two options of nearest rounding and then ceiling rounding. That means what? It is not recommending two trolleys, one for 40 and then one for 5. Now, it is no, as of now, it is only giving you a report. Right? What I'm going to do is, I'm now going to make the system to give output. So it will now create a movement request. Now. It is now going to create a movement request. For that now. So let it now go and create a movement request for this. So go there, click on schedule new process. I'm now going to make it to give output, right? real replenishment. So till now, the report is only coming. Now I will now go there. Min, and then I give a tap. The print min is again. I'm going to give a tap. I will not click on OK now. I will not put the organization over here now. So, organization is a T011. Sort by is an inventory item. And then leave it. Sub inventory is the SFSI. Give a tap. Okay, well, you go down. In the bottom, I'm going to make restock is going to yes. Yes means what? A replenishment output will go. In this case, a movement request will be created automatically. The system will be creating a movement request. So, uh, so it will get movement request for 45 quantities. 45 means what? 40 plus 5. That will be two lines of movement request. So click on submit by which it is now coming up. Now. The movement request is now submitted. Now you can see the output will be basically going as a movement request structure. Movement request is now created. Print moon max. So the movement request will be created. Like Previously, also we manually created a movement request. Now it is more triggered by the min max. The movement request number is now triggered by the min max. So print min max report is now completed. So click on it and then go down and then have a look at it. The print min max report is now ready. So click on it. You're going to have a look at it. Go down and then republish the output. So the same thing. Now also it will show 45, but it has now created a moment request. Fine. Go to the PDF now. Fine. Make it as a PDF. Then it so click on show. And then I will open up the report. When I open the report, you can now see the same 45 is coming, but nowhere it is mentioning the moment request number. Actually, that is the problem. So when you create a report, you customize it to show the moment request number also. That way, I did. close it. Now. Close it. Close it. You know that. 
Now, what you do is, we will now go on and have a look at the moment request number. You go to the place here, management account. Click on the now. We will now look at the moment request number. Afterwards, it is same like what we do for the moment request. So go there. So click on the task carousel and then go to the manage moment request number. They will now go to what? They will now go to inventory numbers. They will now go to the inventory. They will now go to the inventory first of all. That is supply chain execution. You go to the supply chain execution. And then you go to the inventory management. You go there. Click on it. So here you go there. So you now go to manage moment request. Go to the manage moment request. And then here I'm going to find out the moment request. I will now populate my item and then find it out. So it's P01. And then give it a. I'm now going to populate the item. You click on search now. It will show you the moment request for two lines actually. 1440 and then 1450. So the moment request number is also there. Now we have to process this as a replenishment for the as a moment request number. Right? Tell me what are the activity I have to do? Anybody? The moment request is now created as a P approved. So, what are the next activity I have to do? I have to replenish back what? This sub inventory now. So, if you go on and see, then go there. So, this sub inventory I have to replenish. Right? SFSI I have to replenish. I have a moment request demand for two trolleys to be moved from the main sub inventory to the SFSI. Now, tell me, what is the ESS job I have to run for the step now? Moment request number is there for 40 and 5, two lines. Right? So, what is the concurrent I have to run for this? Anybody? We'll now see your. What happens is your ability to understand or remember things. I have to run one ESS job. Tell me which ESS job I have to run for allocating the moment request. I have to allocate the moment request. Then only I can do the pick confirm of it. Now, fine. I have to perform a confirmation. Allocation followed by a confirmation. Actually. Anybody? What are the ESS job I have to run? In this place, I have to run one Print moment request. Fantastic. Print to move. Is the concurrent excellent? Who is this? Sir Satvik. Satvik is very correct now. Fine. Right? Print move is the is the is the ESS job we had to run now. So once when the moment request is approved, we had to run the print move. So this we will not allocate. This is no going to allocate the material. So go that is okay now. It will be allocating the material. Excellent Satvik. Organization is what T zero one one you have. And then from moment request number, right? you can even leave it blank because it will be taking up everything. Go down. Whatever moment request is available, it will not take everything. And then here, go there. I will now say what release approved lines will yes, then only it will allocate. Otherwise, it will only simply print. You know, when the release allocate. Let us now put the moment request number also fine. Otherwise, what happens? It will be giving a lot of prints basically. I'm going to drop down. So, this is the one. Previously, we have made all these things manually. So, the system has created 233903. You go that you can now see that. 233903 is the one the system has created. So I will now put it and take a copy of it. Only for this you allocate. That is what we are saying. Allocate only this one. And then here I have given what? So moment request. What happens? You know, say release approved lines is yes now. So click on submit by which it will be allocating the moment request. The allocation process is now going to come. 923. So once when it is allocated, it will now say it will now become an open pick now. For the two lines, it will now become an open pick. So print moment request pick sleep report is running. So it is going to allocate from the main sub inventory. It is now running. So once it is completed, that is again over there. Print moment request pick sleep report. It is now completed. Go down. Click on republish. I'm going to republish it. So click on it. Go to export and then export it as a PDF file. Yeah, export in a PDF file. Now this will now show you the allocation. The moment request is allocated. It has now allocated two lines. Fine. From the main, you move it to SFSI. From main to SFSI, this is the item. Line yeah. number one. So 40 and 5, it is allocated actually. So it is now allocated 40 and 5. Okay. So this is the one is the moment request. Now take a copy of the pick slip report or from the info let itself we can do it. Pick slip report number is there. So we are going to know what pick confirmation we are going to perform. It is already allocated. So move on, move on from this place. Who is the requester? He is the employee who has requested it. Go there. So it has got two pages fine. One, one or two is there. Page, second page is nothing. Blank. So you have to configure this report 
this is a technical teams work actually fine they will know from there this movement request quick slip report in a very proper manner close it close it no 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 so close it now so go there now we will now go and then do the thing fine go there go to the what is called home icon or otherwise i mean the monitor now i go that monitor so in this place if we give a done now you can now see on the info it itself two are pending two are open it is not coming for this or fine for the or so if you click on it it will not take you to the pick confirmation area two are pending for confirmation also. Two picks are coming, and then click on the hyperlink on this one. Or otherwise, you can even make a search on this. You can even make a search on the bracket. There are multiple ways of search. Only way is this, and then another is what via this also. You can even put the org and then give a go also. So try different different means to be coming. Sometimes when you come to the pick area, it will be coming automatically. So click on the pick slip number on the bottom. You click on it. You go there. <clears throat> so select it, and then both the lines are getting selected. So we are going to say, remember, pick confirmation is always manual. It is not automatic at all. Whereas allocation is automatic. Allocating by running the print move is automatic. Whereas pick confirmation is manual because inventory in charge has to say out of forty, how much you can pick on the way there. There is a problem, so you will say only thirty-eight, thirty-eight can be picked. So this is always manual. The inventory in charge has to manually write how much he is going to pick. Now everything is available for picking. He is saying, and go that click on it. I will now go and then confirm it. Click on it. Confirm and close. So once when you confirm and close, the activity of min-max replenishment is complete. Thank you, Commander Nafai. No doubt. So you go there and then have a look at the item quantities. And now go on and have a look at the item quantities. Manage item quantities one. So we go on and look at it. <clears throat> This will have been confirmed. Actually. Item is what E zero one underscore mm and then give a tap and then click on search. Click on search. So you're going to search for it. It will not show you the quantity now. The total quantity is thousand plus nine thousand and nine. One thousand nine is there. But if you expand it, you will not see the place where it is not showing. Expand it, expand it, and you can see this. So expand it. E zero one nine. Expand it. It shows what in the main we have five nine nine fifty five. The previously we are having a stock of nine. It has now gone to fifty four. So here in this place, see in this place, what happens is that even though you say fifty, it now goes slightly excess. So that is why. If the capacity of the software is sixty-five, you will now set up fifty. So fifteen extra, you keep it always, and then reduce it, and then set it actually. So it is now the stock has gone to fifty-four. This completes one way of what replenishing your SFSI using min-max planning as well as your uh, what's called a print movement request. Normally, in a case, what they will do is they will not run it manually at all. It's very very difficult to run it manually. So what they will do, they will now go there. They will print movement request. Fine. So click on OK. So click on OK, and then they will now what happens? Put all the parameters. After putting the parameters, they will now go to the advanced. The organization is now requesting. Zero one one. Zero one one. Okay. They will now fill up all the parameters, and then they will now run it every one hour actually. So click on the advanced. They are going to run it automatically every one hour. They will now click on it advanced, and then here. Okay. You will now go to the schedule. In the advance, you will now go to the schedule. In the schedule, it says as soon as possible was immediate. Otherwise, using a schedule, they will now use the schedule. In the using a schedule, what happens? Frequency is what? Uh, how early or minute? They will now say how many minute. That is, it. it will going to be what? Fifteen uh, minutes. They will now put zero, and then here fifteen minutes. Every fifteen minutes, it will automatically start to run. It will not keep on running. You can even put a start date and ending. So this is called scheduled concurrent. Scheduled is a job. So once you initiate it, every fifteen minutes from this date to this date, it will now run automatically. So they will be running the print movement request as well as print min max on a scheduled process. So at the time whenever it runs, it is going to check whether it has now gone below the minimum or not. This will now automatically run, and then it will now create a movement request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will now allocate the movement request. Also. So once it is allocated, only confirmation has to be done by the inventory in charge manually. It's a very tough process. We'll now see how many of you understood it. If you understood this process, can you put a green tick now? We'll now see how many of you understood. Otherwise, if you watch it, if you had to watch and then do it, you can put a slow down. Fine, but so Subham is saying yes to watch it and then see it. Now, fine. It is a very important process which you have to configure for very many items. Please try to succeed on this now. I am now giving you time up to two o'clock now for doing it. Fine. So watch the record and then do it. Now, fine. We will now have the next session at two o'clock. But you watch it and then try to do the min max. Fine. So one is what print min, and then one is a print move. So one after the other, it has to follow with what I was. Uh, we have to say 
uh, restocking is equal to yes on the min max and then uh, release is equal to yes on the print mode only when you do it the mo the moment request gets allocated and then afterwards you have to go and then do the pick confirmation so the stock in the sfsi will now go up supreme and then rahul uh you want if you understood but only thing is you have to go through the video am i correct if it is so can you put a uh, okay oh supreme has understood it he says i don't want any videos and all <laughs> excellent supreme thank you right what about sambasi varao you are putting a slow down icon or a green tick icon it, it's not like that sir i want the video <laughs> you also want to review <laughs> I want the video. Oh, okay, okay, fine. We we'll know. I thought not to give him the video at all because he is already fully full conversant. Actually, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I am just understanding. Again, I will, I will have to revise. Okay, okay, fine. So I will now go out and then come back. One, one second. Let me go out and then come back. Leave and then come back now.